is like, what would Jesus do? Right. And, and like, and like, and like, you know, is this like, is this for the kingdom? Like, yeah. it, like is, is what I'm doing, is it for the kingdom? This is Sports Spectrum, bringing Jesus into the sports conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Carlos Panavega, welcome to Sports Spectrum, buddy. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's good to talk to you. Big Time Rush was one of the first things that I really saw my daughter get into when she was, I don't know, what's 2010, maybe 2011. Oh my gosh. She was probably seven or eight years old and she would binge watch this thing before binge watching was, was, was popular. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I said, Sarah, what are you watching? Oh, just big time rush, dad, big time rush. So when the opportunity to have you on the show came about and I was talking to her, she's like, dad, you got to have Carlos on. I think he's really oh, cool. Awesome. You got to have him on. He loves the Lord. I said, all right, well, we're going to have Carlos on. And then so you and I are talking about sports. And I thought, you know what? Your name, because the the the, the last name, Pena Vega, is the combination of your name, your last name, and your wife's last name, right? Yep, so you're Carlos Pena for many years. Obviously, you still are. But there's a baseball player named Carlos Pena yes. as well. And I said, do you know about that guy? And he said, yes, that, that name's come up a few times. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, so when I was, this is probably like two years ago, like in the middle of the whole COVID thing, we were stuck at home. Um, we, were, we were stuck doing a lot of like um, Zoom writing sessions for music. And they were the worst. Cause you know, like you want to feel how it is like in the room, it was the worst. But yeah. one of my sessions was with this guy um, uh, from, from uh, uh, a, a band called Kolohe Kai. They're like a, you know, Hawaiian band or whatever. And I'm, you know, I'm chatting with him and we're like in the middle of the session. He's like, man, I just got to say, I am, I, I, my dad is going to be blown away that I'm literally riding with you. And I'm like, I'm thinking like, really? No way. And he's like, it's like, yeah, like I told him about our session and he just couldn't believe that like Carlos Pena, the baseball player is also in a huge band and I'm writing music with them. And it's just so cool. And I was sitting there and I was like, oh my gosh. This guy thinks I'm Carlos Pena, the baseball player. Oh my! So did you play it so, up? Did you play it up? <laughs> I honestly, I pl I just kind of let it go by, and then at the very end, I was like, "Hey, man, I just gotta tell you something." I was like, "I don't play baseball. <laughs> I'm not that guy." But I didn't know what to say because he was so excited that his dad was gonna be so pumped that he was riding with this epic baseball player, and that was not me. No. Oh my gosh. So did you yeah. have to go into the full explanation of I why did. people might recognize you or whatever? I did, I did, I did, I did. And, and, and again, I saved it for the end of the session because I didn't want to have to bring it up. And he was so excited to be working with me too, that I was like, I don't want to kill his vibe. If like, he's ex like, you know, if he's excited, cause I'm, I'm the supposed baseball player. I was like, okay, I'll just, just roll with it. Well, the funny thing is my name is Jason Romano. And if you Google it, you'll find some stuff on this podcast and me, but there's another Jason Romano, same exact spelling who played baseball no with way. the Dodgers in like 2000. So a few people have, have had conversations with me and said, Hey, so what was it like to play baseball in, in the majors? And I said, that's not me. That's the, me. That's the other Jason <laughs> Romano. So you and I are kind of living double lives. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, no, and didn't, didn't, didn't he play for the Rays too? They still play for the Rays? Yeah. He did. Yeah, 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 he did. And, and, and I'm from Florida. So it was like this whole thing. I was like, what? There you go. Yeah, he's a Tampa Bay Ray for, for many years, Carlos Pena was. Well, this is Carlos Pena Vega, and uh, I'm excited yeah. to talk to you, my friend. This is going to be a really good conversation, not just about sports, but I think going deeper into, you know, why, you know, what the big time rush scene was like into the book that you've written now with your wife. And I know you have a second book that I saw. It's coming out in October. Yeah, and yeah. You're back on tour with the band. Like, there's just so much going on with you. Let me start with this. Let's let's get sports sort of, I hate to say like out of the way, but let's talk about sports for a minute. Not, you know, the professional athletes that we have on, but you love sports. I know you're a Seahawks fan. We were talking about the fact that Russell Wilson isn't there Russell anymore. Russell Wilson's gone. It's okay. okay I'm, still, I'm still going to stick with them. You know, I have one of my best friends is a Tom Brady follower. He loves Tom Brady. Okay. And he just jumps from team to team. And I was like, I'm not going to be that guy. I was like, no, I'm not going to be that guy. I'm going to stick with the Seahawks, even though Russell's gone. So yes. where were you a Seahawks fan from? Was it because of Russell or was it something before that? You're, 
you really want to know. So I, mm -hmm. um, football, like, okay, so my wife, she had always gone to a bunch of LSU games. Mm -hmm. Her, uh, half, half her family is from like Louisiana. So she, she had an in there with the school because her uncle or something, and she would go to all these games. So when I met her, she was trying to get me to be like, you know, college ball fan. I'm like, no, nah, I, I don't really like college ball, but like, like I'll do, you know, you know, pro. And she's like, okay, whatever. So we kind of like didn't really get into it because she was more of a college and I was, you know, pro. And we moved to Maui and I was like, I was so moldable. Like anybody could have, like anybody could have come in, into my life and said, this is your team. Right. And I met this guy, his name was Sean, and he's like a huge Seahawk fan. He's living on Maui now, but he's so much of a fan. Like he's got like 50 yard, like fourth row. Like he wow. is like season ticket holder. Seahawks. He, he, I mean, he, he's had them for years. It goes to seats. So one day he's like, "Hey, do you want to come over to my house and watch Seahawks game?" And I'm like, "I'm not a huge Seahawks fan. Like, I'm not really a, like a huge fan of anyone, but I'll come." And dude, I was hooked. Like, he got me a jersey. We, we we all wore jerseys. His family was there. We were cheering, and I was like, "I'm a Seahawks fan. That's it." And this is like probably four or five years ago, and I was like, "I'm done. That's my team." You were hooked. And ever since then. Yeah, like I literally got my, like all my kids have little jerseys and we all, you know, the, the you know, game comes on and we all wear it and sit there and yeah. Have you ever gone to a, a game? Time. Have you ever gone to a game in no. Seattle? No, and he's invited me so many times and I'm like, when am I ever going to get a chance to be like 50 yard line, four rows up? So I have to take him up on it at some point. Absolutely. I heard yeah. it's the loudest stadium in the NFL. The fans are insane. And so yep. you got to take advantage of that and report back. Yeah, but how, how, how weird was it during COVID watching the games? Like, oh my gosh. It was so weird watching it on TV because I'm like, I miss that energy. Like, you know, and then they would try and do the track. You know, it's like, ah. yeah. yeah, I didn't like it. it. Were you able to watch the games anyways and still kind of, I don't know, take an active role in rooting for your team? It was hard for me. Yeah. I, I wanted my team to win, but it was hard for me to watch games with no fans. It was so bizarre. It, it was weird. It was weird. And, and especially on Maui, like sometimes, sometimes the games are seven in the morning. So you're like getting up and you're like, okay, let me throw my jersey on. We got to watch this game, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. You're in Maui. We had a... Um, Jefferson Bethke, I don't know if you know Jefferson at all. I think he's, he a, lives... he's a good friend of mine. There you go. So he's a friend yeah. of mine too, and he's out there obviously where you live, and he's yep. a big sports fan, a big Seahawks fan, I think, as yep. well. Former baseball player, amazing author. And I asked him, what was it like being a sports fan in Maui? Because all the games, especially on Sunday in an NFL season or even college football on a Saturday, those games are coming on before you're even awake. It's got to yeah. be a different experience. Yeah, like that's how you know that you're a diehard fan. <laughs> if you get up at <laughs> six in the morning to make your coffee so you can watch the game at seven. <laughs> Seriously, it's, it's a, a, I mean, I'm in the East Coast up here in Connecticut and I think the 8.30 p.m. Eastern starts at night to watch the NBA it's, Finals or to watch- It's kind of late. Sunday night NFL is late. I'm up till yeah. midnight. You yeah. guys are, you know, game's over and it's still not even dinner time yet. <laughs> yeah. So, it's crazy it's crazy yeah 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 i don't know i feel like i feel like midwest probably has it great like like everybody in the middle of the country they're like it's the middle of the day the day you still have dinner with their families and then go to sleep i think denver uh our offices for sports spectrum are in denver and i go out there once a month or so i think that's the best location in the united states to watch sports because the games you know, are two hours earlier denver's two hours behind the east coast so they start at you know an 8 30 game here in Connecticut starts at 630. It's over by right. nine and you can actually go to bed at a reasonable time. So I'm, I'm a big fan of the Denver, Colorado mountain time <laughs> for sports, Carlos. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about you a little bit. I want to talk about your faith uh, in the Lord, because that's a big part of what we do here. We do sports, but we also intersect the conversation with faith, with Jesus. Tell us about your faith and kind of how it's shaped you over the years. Yeah, so um, my originally i grew up catholic and it was kind of like the thing where we just like you do the first communion you go you have your sunday school while your mom goes to church and it was very much just checking a box every single week so i i never really had a relationship with jesus until i was about 23 years old and i had just come off uh, a tour and all this is in the book i am very detailed actually which is kind yeah. of scary but i was very yeah. open um yeah and and i come off a tour where i had i had broken up with a girlfriend and i had always been in a relationship so it was the first tour that i was single and uh i did some things that i'm you know not 
necessarily proud of. And I came home and I was in a really dark place. And I called my, my buddy, Andrew, who's kind of been like a, a light, who had been a, a light in my life uh, for a few years there, but I never really understood why. And I called him, I said, hey man, I'm just in a really bad place. And I it's just, how are you always so happy? You know, like, why are you so happy? Mm. And, he, and, he, and he said, Jesus. And I immediately hung up the phone and I was like, that is not the dude to call, you know? And then I, I, and I picked up, you know, uh, some weed and I started smoking again. And I was like chilling. And like two days later, I, I, I found myself in this funk and I was like, what is going on with me? So I called him back and I'm like, okay, just, I need your help, but don't say Jesus, you know? And he, <laughs> he invited me to church and I was like, Ugh, fine, I'll go to church with you. So I show up at church and it's this little black church in Inglewood, right? And like, they got the big hats, they're yeah. worshiping, they're clapping. Like, I, like, I mean, it was, it was unreal. And I love music. So for me, I was like, okay, cool. I'm hooked here. And the bishop comes up and the bishop is like, he, he like preaches this sermon and he goes, when I was 23, and I'm, like, oh, I'm 23. He was like, I was smoking weed. Actually, he called it doobies. I was smoking doobies. And I was like, oh, I'm smoking doobies. He's yeah. like, I was sleeping around. I was like, I'm sleeping around. It was like, I was drinking all the time. I was like, that's me. And he preached this whole sermon that literally he was speaking to me. Hmm. And I left that church that that day and I committed myself to God 100 percent and and from that moment on it was like I was on this path of like 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 on this Jesus high of how do I get more and more and my buddy Andrew invited me to a Bible study that Thursday and I was like oh, duh I'll be there yeah and it turns out my ex-girlfriend was going to be there so I was like maybe I can get back with her now that I'm you know I'm I'm turning a new leaf and that actually happened to be the same night that Alexa was invited to her first Bible study. Wow. And from then on, like, so I met Lex, we started, you know, hanging out and everything, but we literally got to uh, work on our relationship with God at the same time that we were working on our, on our personal relationship with each other. Hmm. And it was really cool because our whole, our whole like dating was founded in us going to Bible study and going to church. Like that's how we would hang out. Thursday night Bible study, Sunday night church. And, and then we started adding more, more throughout the week, but everything was founded in Christ, which was so amazing. Um, so, so from then on, it's just like my heart was pierced and I was ready to go. And everything that we've done since then literally has been, you know, like my, 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 my first instinct is, is like, what would Jesus do? Right. And, and like, and like, and like, you know, is this like, is this for the kingdom? Like, yeah. it, like, is, is what I'm doing, is it for the kingdom? And uh, yeah, I mean, that's been nine, 10 years now since then, since wow. that moment. That's a great yeah. story. I'm glad there's a moment too, because a lot of people that we have on the show, sometimes it's not a moment, it's a gradual process, or maybe they grew up and then, you know, walked away and then came back to faith in college or something like that. A lot of athletes have that story. You have a legit moment similar to mine. I grew up Catholic as well. And there was a moment for me, I was a little older, I was 27, when I, it just kind of hit me and I, I understood, I'd never been shown the fact that I could have a relationship with Jesus. That just was never taught to me as a kid right. growing up. And it changed my life forever as well. You got this book, which I'm really excited about. What if love is the point? Living for Jesus in a self-consumed world with your wife, Alexa. Tell me about that walk after making that decision and growing in Christ, growing in your relationship with your wife, Alexa, but still being in the spotlight, being in Hollywood, having people know about you, like we talked about Big Time Rush, of course, and some of the movies you've done, the music, you're back on tour, a lot of fans know who you are. And sometimes that's taboo when you start bringing up Jesus in very, conversations with people. It's, What's that very, like? yeah. it's very taboo. You know, I, yes. I listen, I always tell people that Christianity is not convenient. Yeah. Like it's probably the hardest decision or sorry, the easiest decision, but the hardest thing that I've ever had to do is walk this walk because you are, are hit with so many obstacles. And I, I feel like, you know, like, especially with this book launch and, and the tour, like the enemy has just been trying to take us down and we've continued to have to be in prayer and, 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 and the more work that you're doing for the kingdom, the more that you're going to be attacked. So it's like, it, it look, it's, it's amazing, but it ain't easy, but mm. nothing great is easy. Like, I always think like the, the things that I like really do enjoy take a lot of work and a lot of effort, but I feel so great that I put that effort and work in. So for me, you know, um, uh, 
being on tour is, uh, it's a very, I hate using this word, it's a very secular type of industry. Like cool. the, 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 the music industry and the movie and TV industry. So is sports, and, by the way, Carlos. So is sports. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, you know, like most, most people hear that word, especially like if they're, if they're, you know, not a believer, they're like secular, blah, blah, blah. but, but, but it's true. It's like, you know, I, I'll say like out of our entire crew, there's probably not including my family. There's probably three of us on tour, you know, uh, our, our guitarist, our, our wardrobe stylist and me who I've connected with who love Jesus, you know? And, you know, I think community is such an important part of life and people forget that finding, finding that, that like solid base of people is, is kind of like your key to continuing on and, and you know, staying grounded. So um, in terms of my family, like Alexa and I have made a decision that we will always keep the family together. Like, like I don't care if, if I have to spend my whole paycheck of this tour to have my family on this on like, on the road, yeah. like I need, I, I like, like we need to be there for each other. So like we have our own bus, you know, it's, it's me, Alexa, our three kids. And, and then we have a nanny on board to help us. Cause it's a little crazy. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's amazing. I get off stage and if, if, if I had a bad day, she's right there and we pray at night and, and then we go to sleep and I wake up and my kids are there and we have, we have a good time. And, you know, I just think like, our, our industry is not built for families and you really have to put the work in to, to, you know, make it work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of how, how I deal with this whole world and being, being kind of like the outsider to them. To me, I don't feel like an outsider, but to them, I might be the guy on the outside who, who doesn't cuss, uh, yeah. you know, who doesn't drink, who just kind of just like chills and like, you know, does his thing. But there's a there's a witness in that, right? The Bible talks about being an ambassador for Christ, and I have to imagine even if you have the enemy and, and just the world coming at you, maybe like I said, uh, you know, being taboo using that name Jesus, there might also be, or I'm sure there has been opportunities for you to share, and yeah. you've seen people respond to that because of the platform that you have. Do you have a story, sure. or just maybe just in general some thoughts about that? Yeah, you know. There's, 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 there's one word that I really, uh, I really believe in and it's consistency. You know, I, I, I truly, I truly try, make sense. I, I, I really try and make sure that, that I'm consistent in my walk with Jesus. I want someone to look into my life and look at my life and know exactly who I am and know exactly who Jesus is through yeah. everything that I say and everything I do. Um, I, I, listen, I do have a lot of, of patience for people. Um, Alexa has, has, has been helping me work through that, especially people who call themselves, you know, followers of Jesus. Like I struggle with, I'm like, I'm like, what? Like you can't post this and then say this and then put, I mean, you're yes. literally, you're confusing people. Right. Yes. Yes. And, and she's been teaching me just, Hey, you know what, maybe let's just keep praying for them. And, and, you know, we can't change them. All we can do is make sure that our walk is consistent. So what we do is that we just make sure that what you see is what you get. I'm an open book. I'll talk about my downs. I'll, I'll talk about my ups, my highs and my lows. Um, you know, I, I, I like, you know, I like the guy who you're talking to right now, I'm going to be the same, you know, with the person who's working at the, you know, uh, counter at the hotel. Like yes. I just, tr I truly believe that consistency is the key to making, you know, making it work. So you call yourself an open book. You decided to write a book. Uh, that's yes. not an easy thing. I've actually written two and I know it's a very difficult process. Tell us about what if love is the point and not just writing it yourself, but co-authoring it right with your wife. Yeah. So, so uh, after uh, Lex and I got married uh, about a year into our marriage, we did a show called Dancing with the Stars. Sure. Listen, it's not sports, but it's very physical. I've heard of it. It's, it's you know, a little tiny show, right? A few people. <laughs> that, was the, that was the best shape I've ever been in my life. Like yeah, those dancers, you. and you know, oh. nine hours of dancing every single day. Yes. And um, after the show, we we started having all these questions. And we, we started this one sheet, right? And it was like, what's the point of marriage? What's the point of not having sex before marriage? What's the point of sharing finances? What's the point of life? What's the point of following Jesus? All of these, what's the points? What's the points? And then, you know, we would pray about it and, and, and answer it amongst each other, not thinking anything of it. It was just more of like, a, 
kind of an exercise to get closer and, you know, just kind of deepen our relationship with each other and God. Yeah. And we kind of held on to this one sheet. And as the years go by, like, you know, people here and there would ask us and say, hey, have you ever thought of writing a book? I'm like, well, kind of. I mean, here's this one sheet, uh, an idea, and nothing ever happened to it. And um, that happened probably three or four times. And speaking of Jefferson Bethke, about a year and a half ago, he sends me a text and he goes, hey, my uh, publisher, Jenny, she wrote me and she saw a video that Alexa made about her eating disorder that she had back in the day. And she'd love to chat with you guys. And I was like, oh, okay, great, well, great. So, you know, we, we have this Zoom during COVID and, you know, it's, it's all awkward and hi, whatever. And she's like, have you guys ever thought about writing a book? And I'm like, well, I have this one sheet from like nine years ago, eight years ago. And uh, we sent it over and she's like, I love the concept. Let's write a book. I'm like, wow. that's it. We're just going to write a book. And she's like, yeah, here's a, here's a book deal. Let's write a book. And um, uh, so, so Lex and I started word vomiting because we're not authors. I mean, I, I, I guess now we are, but at the time we were just like, okay, here's our, you know, here's what's coming out of our heart. And um, this amazing woman, uh, Margot Starbuck, I have to give her so much credit. She, she came on board and she spent, countless hours with us on zoom day after day just kind of like helping us get everything in an organized fashion because yes. listen i'm an actor i can talk i can write 30 pages it may not make sense but i but but i mean i can just you know spit it out and she was really great to help us kind of make it all make sense and you know it's really cool lex and i do like 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 separate chapters so i'll do a chapter and then she'll do a chapter and i'll do a chapter and then at the very end we both do a chapter together and it, it's just, it's really cool to have our story. And we didn't spare any details. Like we just, we talk about it from, from you know, um, family stuff to personal stuff to, yeah. to some crazy financial losses that we had. And we just kind of put it all out there because to us, those are the things that are gonna help change lives is when people are real, they wanna see the real you. Yeah, what if love is the point? It's out now, released back in late June uh, and you have this, new book. As I was just doing my research, I'm like, wait a minute, in October, there's another book coming out. It's a kid's book, Ocean's kids World, book. right? Yeah. Is that the name of it? Yeah. Tell me about yeah. that. So we have three kids, Ocean, Kingston, and Rio. And we moved to Maui when Ocean was one years old. Those are amazing uh, names, by the way. Amazing thank you. names. Well, I, I know. We're, we're kind of screwed for a fourth because I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, how do, you, how do you top Ocean, Kingston, and Rio? Yes. Um, but uh, but um, I, I had this, and again, this is all God. Like, this whole book thing is all God's timing and us not forcing anything, right? Just, just like letting, letting God do his work. And um, as we're having this conversation, you know, about what if love is the point, I'm like, guys, I'm gonna throw this out to you. I have a children's uh, TV show idea that I've been wanting to make since Ocean was born. What do you think about this? And they were like, we love it. Let's do a children's book. And it was like, wait, it was that easy? Are you kidding me? Like, what? <laughs> So, so yeah, so we, so, so we have this incredible story about, uh, about these kids, Ocean, Kingston, and Rio, and um, think like, think like Dora the Explorer, but way cooler. I love um, it. And, uh, and they get to travel the world. And in this first book, we are exploring Maui, and they're in search of the sunrise seashell, because they got to find it for their mom's birthday. And uh, who is Alexa? So I guess I'm in the book too. Uh, and, yeah. and, and, and they go out and find it. And then, and uh, now, and now we're like in talks about book number two, and we're, you know, talking about trying to get them to go sailing. And I don't know, I'm just excited to, to, to take these, I guess, they're fictional characters, they're non-fictional characters, but the characters in the book to take them around the world and show kids like different places. Cause we love traveling. So like, you know, for us to, you know, have these books going to like, you know, South America and Ireland and, Maui is just going to be some some like really cool things. That's awesome. That's coming out in October. I mentioned October. my daughter up front. She's 18 now. She's getting ready to go to college. Remains a big fan of Big Time Rush. You guys are back on tour. Uh, you were 20 years old. Am I right on that? When you when you came into the show, uh, um, 21. I was actually, in that range. I was 19. 19. Right. I was, so I was 19. That's yeah. what 13 years ago or whatever it was. You're back on tour. So here's my question though: What's the biggest difference between that Carlos? In fact, if I told that Carlos that you'd be a two-time author working on a third book, you'd probably laugh at me. But yeah. what's the biggest difference between that Carlos, that 20-year-old, other than, well, maybe maybe you can't keep Jesus out of it, right? That's the biggest difference. But between that man back in 2009 and the man today? I think 
between my wife and Jesus, I am so, like I have so much security in who I am and in my beliefs and just security in general. Like, like I just feel so much more at peace and so much more grounded. I think back then I was still searching and I didn't know what I was searching for. Yeah. And I was, and I was trying to find whatever that was, that, 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 that fulfillment in so many different things. I mean, you know, I'm playing shows in front of 10, 15,000 people. And you'd think like, yeah, that's it. Like you've done it. But then I would, I would, I would, I would, I would leave the show and I'd be like, huh, well, that's, that was cool. But like, <laughs> I want more, you know? And, yeah. and I believe after I, you know, gave myself over to Christ and I met, met my wife and committed to her and you know, started a family, like now I see what the true value of life is and, and, and the true meaning of, you know, being on this earth and, and living for Jesus. And this stuff, like I always tell people, like what I get to do for a living is not my job. It, like, it, it's a hobby. Like these are things that like I get to do for fun. My job is to go around and share the gospel. Mm -hmm. Everything else is just a hobby. And that's, that's kind of how I live my life. Could you see yourself at the pulpit someday uh, doing something like that? If the pulpit looked like a stage with a microphone, <laughs> you, like, you know, like a concert, yes. Yeah. I don't know if I'd ever be like a pastor or anything. Yeah. Um, but hey, you know what? I, I never thought that I'd have three kids. Like, I mean, so, so or, be, or be an author to two books, probably. Or, or be an author, like, like yeah. <laughs> Carlos, my last question uh, is really just a shout out to my daughter and maybe some encouragement for her and any of those 18 year olds that are headed to college this fall who are trying to live their life the right way, maybe the fans of your show. Uh, can you give like some encouragement there for maybe Sarah, my daughter, and, and some of the yeah. other, some of the well, others? Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Um, <laughs> encouragement. You know, I used to get really, uh, really down when, or, or very discouraged with no's. Like a no for a TV show or a no from a girl that I asked out or like, no's used to really discourage me and my my mindset has shifted in a sense where like now like a no to me just means that i got to work harder i know it's kind of cliche and like everyone says it but 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 really like like i don't think of them as no's anymore i think of it as god going hey just like not right now just hold on not right now not right now so you know as you continue through life like you're not going to get the things that you want and it doesn't mean that you're not going to get them right now so it's mm -hmm. okay you know and and, and truthfully, God's timing is everything. Like there are so many things in my life that had they happened five years ago, it wouldn't have been as good as it is today. So I'm so glad that God made me wait those five years because I got to grow, I got to learn, I got to you just like understand things more. And um, yeah, just trust God's timing, really. You just have to uh -huh. trust it. That's good encouragement, Carlos Pena Vega. Th by the way, congratulations again. I know I said this at the top, but Writing a book and releasing a book, releasing two books is a really big deal. So that's really cool. Congratulations on What If Love Is The Point, coming soon, Ocean's World, and hopefully many more. And uh, all the best to you. Thanks for joining us here on Sports Spectrum. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for watching today on Sports Spectrum. Make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos. And if you want more stories on sports and faith, check out our website, sportsspectrum.com.